In this video, we are going to explore together the two main types of Feng Huan Danzong Oolong, the bouquet style and the classic style. We will taste them and by doing so, we will tell you all the difference between the two so that in the future you will be also able to recognize them. Keep watching! Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan and today I am again with Carolyn. Hi! And today, as said, we are going to speak about Feng Wan Dan Song and in particular about two different uh, types of Feng Wan Dan Song that are not so well known actually, this distinction between the bouquet style and the classic style. If you're new here in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skill, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. And uh, if you enjoy watching this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, which is very important for us. Alright, so let's get started. First of all, um, we have to make a choice. We have to decide to pick one tea for the bouquet style and one tea for the classic style. If you look now at our website, we don't explicitly mention it, but we have, for example, uh, Huan Zixian which is uh, nowadays a typical bouquet style. In the past, it was most more processed like a classic style, but then in recent year, they have a little bit changed that, and uh, uh, we could have taken that one. Uh, we haven't done it, uh, but uh, we could have also taken Yashishang. Yashishang is another typical example of uh, a um, greener bouquet style oolong, but we also haven't taken it that. Why? Because we have here, on this side, we have our Xingren Shan, so the Xingren Shan that you find also on our website. Xingren Shan is a, one of the most uh, um, traditional classic style uh, dance song. And at home, I had a small batch of a Xingren Shan, which is this one on this side, that was processed as a bouquet style. So since uh, we have the chance here to have uh, two Danzong of exactly the same cultivar processed by the same farmer, one as a classic style and one as a bouquet style, then we took those two and uh, we decided to taste them together so that we can really focus on the difference between the processing which are without being influenced by the difference between the taste of the cultivar. All right, so what we've done here, we've put uh, in the guy one already uh, four grams of each. Uh, Caroline, you will be brewing this one, the darker one, and I will be brewing the, the lighter one, the bouquet style. We start and while, while doing so, we will also explain to you a little bit the difference between the two. So, water is a 95, I would say it's fine, we can give it a rinse. Just a quick rinse. There you go. So, as you see in the picture, the, the bouquet style is a little bit more uh, green. It is uh, basically less oxidized and less baked. Now, traditionally, different cultivars have been associated to different production uh, uh, processes, either classic or bouquet style, because uh, the um, people in Feng Wan just associated that uh, and thought that uh, that particular processing is the best for that particular cultivar. But that doesn't mean that you can do, for example, a bouquet style out of uh, uh, Shan. So let's smell the lid. I already smelled mine. We want to try with mine. What do you say? It smells a bit like jasmine. Uh, yeah, definitely. There is, uh, is uh, it's, it's very flowery and it's hard to show you in the camera. Uh, we can try actually though. Um, I'll try to get closer to that one because I think it is a little bit better. I don't know if you can see that the one on this side is a little bit uh, greener. We can definitely uh, see that, right? You see uh, some, especially some tips that are much uh, greener. 
And now let's deep deep. You want to try to start? <clears throat> I was surprised when I was first served this Shingren Chan. We were in the, wait a second, with more. We were in, um, together on the tea tour and our farmer, wait, and our farmer um, just uh, gave it to us. And I was surprised that for the first time, actually, a Shingren Chan that is bouquet style. Okay, let's go. I will wait a little bit more so that the two are more or less deep with the same time. Your guy one is still closed. <laughs> and we can also start looking at the color. This has a little bit of... Um, how would you describe that? Amber. Amber, so uh, yellow. And this is even lighter. Yeah, it is it's lighter. It's also a different picture though, so it has a sort of... A yeah, but still in the color yes. should be quite clear that uh, this one is much uh, lighter. Yeah, you have to speak a bit louder, otherwise they don't hear you. And uh, you see, this is very yellow. And this you said amber, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see the taste. Uh, so yeah, you do both cups with this and then you give me one maybe. Let's see. So you see that actually in the leaves, you if you are, if you if you don't know what you have to look for, it's hard to say that they are two different processing. They look quite similar in the leaves, but in the liquor, everyone would say one is yellow and the other one is uh, dark yellow or amber. So I will start. Which one you start with? The the same one as you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it tastes very, very flowery. Mm -hmm. It has this, um, it is in the mouth, of course, the taste, but it has this feeling when you really um, smell fresh jasmine flower. Yeah. Sp springtime as well, yeah, yeah. jasmine, mm. yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, let's try the other one. This is deeper tone, um, maybe even a little bit uh, woody. Very woody, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we call them a uh, bouquet style and uh, uh, classic style, or if you want, you can say traditional style. They also have a name uh, in Chinese. So this Feng Wan Dan Son, the the floral one, is called Xing uh, Xiang. Uh, that means something like uh, uh, clear fragrance. Yeah, Xing is clear and Xiang is uh, Xiang is fragrance. That one is called uh, Shu Xiang, which means I mean, if you literally translate it, is like cooked fragrance. But what they mean by that is uh, that is uh, um, ripe, in a way. That's interesting actually because also Shu Puer, yeah, that is it's cooked Puer. We also translate it with ripe, so I think ripe is a good is a good translation for it. Yeah, I think the next round we steep it even a little bit more to to bring a little bit more taste. Do you have any bitterness in either cup? Maybe it'll be better when to see once it's steep for longer mm -hmm. for the bitterness. Because for now I don't. I don't feel any bitterness, but yeah, might change. Would you like to open your guy one? So this is now water at 90 degrees centigrade. Yeah, well, let's let's leave it for a little bit longer to get really um, more taste out of it. Now I have a question for Caroline. We say that this one is clearly floral, jasmine floral. Uh, you drink also a lot of uh, Taiwan oolong. How would you compare? Uh, this is a lot more floral. A lot a more lot floral. More. Yeah, a lot more. Even yeah. if you compare it like to a uh, high mountain Alishan, yes. for example. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More yeah, floral. Yeah. Okay. More floral. Yeah. And it's surprisingly floral, actually. For uh, uh, even yeah, even a dance song, I find it really yeah. The, the, intense. Yeah, yeah. Very intense. Yeah. And now maybe you know why 
I swapped. You remember? The, the, when when we had the, more floral. Than yeah, the, but when we had the blind tasting, the, yeah, the I was. Uh, I flower. said uh, it is. Uh, yeah, I say that the, at the end. Oh, this is the bouquet style Xingrenxian, mm. and uh, and I thought that this tea, while it was the ginger flower, that is also very floral, right? So it, it was very very hard. Shall we? Yes. Okay, you go, and I do just a little bit after you. I mean, the, the color now is very clear. We are on this side of the camera, but I'm sure that also on your side, one is almost brown and the other one is very clear. It looks like, uh, how to say, like camel tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's also that uh, as typical for floral oolong, the first steeping is the one where you get the most uh, aroma out of it. So let's see how it is this one. It's still very sweet. Wow, it's extremely sweet. Mm -hmm. Like cane sugar. What about the texture? How do you feel the tactile feeling in the mouth? It likes rough. Thin, smooth, so something smooth. in between. So it's not super smooth, nor is it really rough. Because it has it has this minerality a little bit. Yes, it has. Yeah. Typical of Danzon that bring you some crispiness to the taste. Mm -hmm. You uh, and. Have you already tried the other one? No, 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 no. Not yet, because what about the aftertaste? I, I feel it here, like all the sweetness coming out, coming through. It remains very sweet in the mouth. Yeah, I think this one has a hui gan, so it will stay mm. like for a long time after. Uh, but it's difficult because we're drinking both, so we cannot see uh, right, the, it's hard, yeah. the, whether mm. which one has the, the, the strongest hui gan. So let's try the classic style, the Shu Xian. So chocolatey compared. Tastes yeah. like chocolate. Like I would never come up with chocolate if I drink it standalone. But when you compare it with the other, it has this deeper note, this darker note. Chocolate, hood. Um, it's interesting that actually it's not uh, as uh, sweet sour as I was remembering it. I don't know if it, because maybe I'm influenced by the other one, but I always as with uh, classic style dance song, I often have these, the, this sourness, maybe bitterness, it's difficult to say, but you have a contrast between the sweetness and another, yeah, that is either a little bit bitter, a little bit sour, a little bit mineral, but here I don't have that. They are not bitter actually. Mm. It's more fruity. I would definitely not say it's not floral. I mean, I would never no, no, come no, up no. with. Uh, it's more like dry fruits or, or things mm. like that. Yeah. Mm. Concerning, if you're interested in the, um, let's say, traditional Chinese medicine temperature of the two teas, the um, Usually classic style Danzong is more of a um, medium, yeah? It's not cold, it's not warm, so it's suited for many, many different people, yeah? If you are a cold person or a warm person in terms of TCM, this tea will do no harm. While the floral style is definitely on the cold side. So you don't want to drink it early in the morning on an empty stomach. If you are a cold person, is definitely not the right tea but it has this uh, um, fragrant spring freshness yeah that is, uh, is is refreshing actually which one do you like the most i think i will go for the the floral one yeah the, floral. the bouquet style um just because it's really surprisingly floral um, um and the Xing Ren Xiang, of course, is a really good one. So, so it's very, but it's more classic. Like it's, 
more it's closer to what you would think is a uh, Xing Ren Xiang, but uh, yeah. the other one is really totally different. And with the with the floral one, I well, sorry, I'm heating up the temperature here. With the uh, floral one, I have to after I drink, I have to breathe out my nose to bring again the the taste of it, and there I recognize these uh, let's say almond fragrance. But anyway, the typical feature of Shingren Shan. So Shingren Shan has a typical taste as a cultivar that you always recognize. It is easier to recognize when it is processed in the standard way. In the floral, you need uh, to work a little bit on it. Let's do a longer steep. Those leaves are very green. Let's see mine. Well, these are now also green, but is uh, a rather uh, dark. Um, you can imagine them. I know you don't see them in the camera. You can imagine like, uh, for some reason, this became very green. Well, now you cannot see very well. So they have uh, uh, the, um, the high baking and the high oxidation is more visible in uh, uh, the dry leaves. And then when you steep them, the color of the leaves become pretty similar. And um, this might also be related with the fact that actually it's more the baking that was done here at higher temperature rate of the oxidation. Otherwise the oxidation you would see still the brown in the uh, wet leaves actually. Yeah, I would leave it uh, for a little while. Um, this, uh, I take it also an opportunity to, to say something, is uh, um, you see that in this video and also in other videos, we sometimes taste tea that are not available on our shop. <laughs> so like this one here, you have it. This one you don't have. You might ask yourself why. Well, it's actually very simple. When we were this spring in, uh, in China, we found this other Xingren Shan that I find it also extremely interesting, but I cannot buy a second Xingren Shan for Nano Shan if I have already the other one on stock. And moreover, the other one is what the customer would expect because it's a typical Shingren Shan. If I sell the other one, I'm sure some of you will complain and tell me, oh no, this is not Shingren Shan. And so I bought, uh, I think, uh, half a kilo just for myself. And uh, uh, yeah, and I have it at all, basically. And uh, like this, tea, there are other examples in the previous uh, um, in a, I think yeah, it was a previous uh, video where uh, I was drinking a um, 15 years old or 16 years old by Yachilan. There's also another example, right? Uh, we uh, took that together a few years back and uh, it was expensive, very little quantity. So what do you do? You cannot buy for Nano Shan. But now things are changing. So what are we going to do? Through our newsletter, very soon, it might be the next newsletter or the one after the next, we will explain how to get the teas of our private collection. And our private collection means my private collection, Mattia's private collection, maybe I steal some tea from Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. But uh, we have a lot of these small batches that are very, very high quality that actually I would like to share with you, but we cannot put on the website because it's little quantities, it's really too much effort to make the product page. So we will offer probably two different ways of uh, getting regularly some of our private collection. We can wait a little bit. And this will be explained in, uh, in our newsletter. So if you haven't signed it yet, go ahead on our uh, website. There is also a link in the description just below this video. Subscribe it because only for our uh, um, loyal customers that also read our newsletter, we will offer this uh, opportunity. Both are now deeper in color, right? This could be even a black tea, a very pale one. All right, hmm. let's try a last time. I will start now with the just for 
Now the Shingren note is more clear and you have this kind of sour bitter note that comes through. Now that you, now you know what I mean with this combination of bitter sweet so and I, that one. No, no, I tried the, the other one. Oh, you tried the other one. Mm. I don't know if, yeah, I, I'm sure it is because of the longer steeping, not there. Now it is very typical Shingren, yeah. I, I really, I have to say, Danzong is one of my three, among my three favorite tea. And if I really have to drink only one for the rest of my life, I would probably choose Danzong rather than poor. Yeah, it's a hard choice, but that's what I feel like today at least. It has the combination of everything. It has this high aroma, the complexity, the minerality, a little bit of bitterness, and it's just so pleasant. It's something that uh, um, it's, it has no equal, actually. It's so easy to recognize a classic dance song. What do you think about the taste? Mm -hmm. They're both really good, yeah. It changed, right? This became now is no more so high peach floral. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a bit of the sour taste coming out of the first one. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Both have these sour notes, yeah, that I like very much actually in Dansong. There are not so many tea that are sour, but Dansong sometimes develop a very uh, pleasant sourness. And then the classic style, um, it has also very light um, honey, dark honey notes. It's not like Milan Shan, that uh, is, is more uh, um, clear honey, I would say, and floral. It has this uh, nuttiness uh, and honey viscosity to it, yeah. But you can really taste the minerality because of the very long steep as well in the, in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, if you are, uh, let's say, used to drink uh, the uh, Gonfucha style, then don't be afraid, put a little bit uh, longer steeping time, yeah? And if you're not afraid of getting a little bit of sourness and bitterness in the cup, I'm sure you will like it much better. If uh, is your first step with Dansong, then start later with uh, um, lower steeping time and I would say even lower temperature. We have been steeping at 90-95 degrees centigrade. You can go for 85, get used to the taste. Lower temperature brings some um, less bitterness out so it will have more aroma and then you have time to increase the temperature, increase the steeping and get all the complexity out of it. Do you have anything to add? I don't think so. <laughs> so this is uh, what we wanted to say. There is one more thing actually I want to say is that this repartition between classic style and bouquet style is not very easy to find in the literature. Does it exist? And for me is an easy way of start separating Danzong into some categories because you have a lot of different cultivars. I would say there are 11 that are the main cultivars and on top of that Every few years there are new cultivars, so it's a very complex uh, uh, scenery and spectrum. In fact, there are some um, uh, people in China that have studied for a long time Danzong and have even put more categories. They haven't distinguished simply bouquet and uh, classic. They say there is uh, a group that is bouquet, a group that is fruity, a group that is herbal, a group that is vegetal. So. There is more to say about that, but I would say if you start asking yourself is it uh, a ripe classic style or a bouquet style is already a very good start for understanding better than some. All right, thank you very much for watching and if you have done it, uh, if you have made it to this point, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe our channel if you, have done, if you haven't done it yet. Thank you very much again and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ja gut, er ist dunkler. Ja. Aber es ist schon interessant, dass die beiden sind äh, vom gleichen Farmer gemacht. Also jetzt sind wahrscheinlich die gleiche, das gleiche Gier.